Welcome to night one of WrestleMania Endgame, and we are going to kick things off with Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch for the Women's World Championship. Now, in this match, I thought it was pretty good, despite a couple of flaws about some of the moves looking a little bit sloppy, but... You guys have to remember, it was cold in Philly. So, of course, it's not going to look exactly the way we want it to. And also, real quickly, I hope that Rhea never has another live entrance again. That band was awful. It made my ears bleed. Emo fans, you can get mad at me all you want, but that was atrocious. There were some really fun spots in this match, especially when Rhea did a riptide through the announcing table, and then another riptide off of the top turnbuckle, just to name a couple examples. One, two, three, Mommy is on top, she retains, I am one for one in that predictions video. Next we have the six-man tag team ladder match, which is basically, I call this the comedy ladder match, because there were a lot of comedic elements to this match. There were, uh, there were, were a couple of okay spots, but really, most of the comedic stuff came from our truth essentially i'm so glad that our truth got his wrestlemania moment this dude is super funny and i'm glad that this turned into a comedic style match even though there were some things that left my head scratching like jd mcdonough not going up to the ladder quick enough instead of talking or trying to get finn up there quicker he should have done it himself. Or when JD McDonough got thrown off of the ladder. And he was supposed to go through two tables. But he somehow missed the completely first table. But smashed through the second table. And I was wrong. My bro and best friend Dustin was right on this. We officially have the tag team titles split. Over on Monday Night Raw, you have your new Raw Tag Team Champions, The Awesome Truth. And then over on SmackDown, you have A-Town Down Under as your Tag Team Champions. I'm rating this match, I'm going to give it a 7. Because I enjoyed it, it was still comic filled, but let's maybe no more, no longer do six man ladder matches. It's it doesn't really work that well anymore. Oh, I also forgot to give my ranking for Rhea versus Becky really quickly. I'm giving that match a solid eight. It's a solid eight. Now we go to. Oh boy, on Rey Mysterio and Andrade versus Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. Oh boy, that match. I'm going to be honest, I didn't really care for that match. Andrade had no business being in there, especially when it was supposed to be Dragon Lee, and then Dragon Lee got taken out. So, yeah, I'm giving that match a, ooh, let's see. I'm going to give it a six. It was, eh. It was okay. I didn't think it was WrestleMania-worthy material. And then everybody's supposed dream match of Jey Uso versus Jimmy Uso. I'm not, I'm the ma not going to lie. The match was not great. The match was very lackluster. The only decent thing about this match was the whole Jay storytelling of is Jay going to forgive Jimmy? 
Uso and go soft and have the sympathetic role. And, well, it almost cost Jey Uso the match. But, Jey Uso somehow ended up winning, thank goodness. So there's that match. And then we go to the Intercontinental Championship match of Gunther versus Sami Zayn. Now this match right here, I called it right down the middle. I predicted the winner and boy was I right. But this match was so, so good to watch. Watching Sami Zayn get his butt handed to him by Gunther, and then Gunther getting distracted by Sami's wife the entire time for the biggest history-making moment of the night where Sami Zayn dethrones Gunther's longest reigning intercontinental title run. Just awesome. I jumped out of my best friend's chair when I saw that because I was wanting Sami to win. And Sammy won. So I'm giving that match a solid 9. That match was... Mwah! And speaking of another match I could have really cared less for... Was Bianca, Jade Cargill, and Naomi versus Damage Control. And obviously... The match essentially was just to put over Jade Cargill... And Jade Cargill got the win. One, two, three. Your winners, Team Bianca. Now, we get to the fun, fun matchup of the main event of WrestleMania. The final boss, The Rock, and the Tribal Chief, Cody, the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns, sorry, versus the crybaby walking emoji Seth freaking Rollins and Cody Rhodes. This match was so fun to watch. It was a slow burner, but The Rock was a pivotal moment in this match. During the match, when The Rock is telling the ref, you better not count me out or you're getting fired, don't F with me, was hysterical. We could have had five different disqualifications in this match, 45 different count outs. I mean, The Rock looked good in this match. I thought he was going to be winded and slow, but no. The Rock was selling better than Roman sometimes during the match. Now, I will say that you could really tell that they do not care about Seth Rollins' title match tomorrow because Seth Rollins was getting the tar beat out of him the entire match. He was getting whooped like a government mule. And shout out to the commentary team, especially Michael Cole this evening. You could tell Cole was such a hater of both Roman Reigns and the final boss. There were a couple instances where I thought the stomp looked very weird. Like, for example, when Seth and Cody did their stomp crossroads combo on Roman Reigns, it should have went crossroads, curve stomp first instead of the stomp and then crossroads. That looked very odd to me. And then when Seth Rollins tagged himself in, Cody Rhodes did a very awkward looking Cody Cutter that look that could have did a little better in my opinion. And then during the final end of the match where Roman had Cody in the guillotine chokehold in the rock, the final boss had his Cody's legs down. Seth did this awkward curve stomp again to Roman's face when he was lying 
down in the mat like this. That was kind of weird. But the two funnest spots of the evening were when Rock took his own rock bottom in the announcing table. And then Roman Reigns speared Seth Rollins through the barricade. Somebody explain to me how the heck The Rock got up before Seth Rollins did. And Seth Rollins only took a spear through the barricade. Overall, the Bloodline wins. Tomorrow is going to be shenanigans galore for Mr. Cody Rhodes. Now... If you enjoyed this review, come smack the video with a like and comment down below. Do you think Cody Rhodes is going to win clean? Or are we going to have a bunch of shenanigans tomorrow? Because I don't think Roman is losing now. It doesn't make sense to me to have both Gunther lose his title reign and then Roman lose... His title reign in the same, not in the same night, but in the same event. I could be wrong, but you guys let me know in the comment section below. And if you're hyped for WrestleMania Endgame Night 2, please make sure to subscribe to the Dave Show so you do not miss my review of WrestleMania Endgame Night 2. And while you're at it, check out my NXT Stand and Deliver review and give it some love. And before I leave, for the love of humanity, don't ever, in the Dave Show says, don't ever disrespect the rap goat Eminem. Little Wayne is not the rap goat. That dude made my ears bleed. But anywho, your favorite YouTube underdog is out. Peace.